When I was a teenager, we lived in San Diego, and my mom watched Santa Barbara, the soap opera. And they went on a writer's strike, just like we've got right now. And so the scabs came in and said, watch the love-crazed maniacs on Santa Barbara. So today you get to watch the sword-crazed maniacs on Wingsaber. YouTube. Or Patreon. No, I'm not going to stop recording that. That was funny, damn it. <laughs> I'm laughing. At my expense, granted. But, all right, we are finally getting into the slightly speeding up portion of these videos. We are presuming that you have actually practiced these hundreds of reps per previous video so that you can myelinate those muscle fibers and have these actions beginning to become instinctive and more comfortable than the craptastic I'm going to flail around not sure what I'm doing with my arm bit. So you're on notice. If it's not working for you, go back practice more. All right. Last one from my bind of second. Her weak is in my strong, and she is going to throw several blows in a row. She will throw head, bonk, inner cheek or inner face, pal. This can also be done as a descending block. Show, excuse me, descending cut. Show that. Pop, chest, pow. Look at that beautiful lean. It's from the waist. Don't overextend your knee. There you go. And go, in upper arm cut. Right in the 4-1 position. It's a rising arm cut to the bicep. These swung cuts are slower. Yes. They also teach you mechanics that you need continuing rotation. That upper arm cut, for example, is what I like to call a cut in seventh because it uses that same arm angle. Lots of folks don't know how to defend against it. And if you're uncurling really tight and fast and hard, you can make these longer cuts work. For every one of these binds we go through, you should have a response that you've done until it's as instinctive as blinking your eyes. And you should have one other that you like and enjoy that you keep in your back pocket for when they learn what your game is. Just to keep the suckers on guard. <laughs> All right, let's see it again. Go a little further back, sorry. There we go, good. All right, swung head cut, pop. Okay, make more swing this time so the viewers can, there you go. Oh, hello ceiling. Yep, so it's really clear to the people watching that it's not the direct cut, but that you're actually coming around, even if you have to keep it low so we don't piss off my landlord. Here, I'll actually get in a real stance so that <laughs> we have a lower target. All right, all right. And pop. All right, now inside face. Pop and back. Notice how much her wrist isn't doing. And upper arm. Good. All right, come the other way and model it, please. Okay, so. You will notice sometimes cat goofs up and puts a little bit of wrist in it. Sometimes cat leans back too far as if she's doing a parry, which is detrimental to her knee. Try to come back to your neutral position. We're not doing a big scar toe on the parry right now. Yeah, I don't know who was jamming a saber into my sandals, but that's what they call it. <laughs> Situational awareness. Yeah, you put an actual divot in the ceiling that time. No. That was All right, right there. one more time. Okay. Notice, if you don't have a high ceiling, you will want to be in a nice low stance when you practice these. Good. Notice how her back leg is bending without her rising up into the air much. Good. Now, the much part is an important observation. If I am here and I'm going to straighten that back leg to make my lean, I don't want to do this. I want to do that. Okay? So come back. You can do it on that side if you want. Stay in the shade. Practice doing your lean to where you don't tilt the 
pelvis and rise up out of your stance because that's gonna get you hit. Pop, okay? <laughs> Try it one more time. And pick a low stance and then stay as low as you can manage while you do it. Okie dokie. So no rising component to your hips. Is it okay if I just pantomime it? Sure. That way I'm not gonna hit the ceiling again. No, no, have a weapon in hand. Poor. Just stay low. Poor we believe in you. Ah, the temptation to rise up out of stance is strong, isn't it? Definitely. And that's a thing when you work on getting that lean in, what some of the Hungarian systems will call a demi-lunge, that you're neither taking your weight too far backwards nor rising up out of your stance. So, stay still a second, come back in stance. When you come back from the lean, you should not be coming all the way here. This is for deep parries where you're covering ground. You come back to here, and when she comes forward, it's right there. There's no rise out of stance vertical component. Okay? All right, so what do you think from doing that? Give me observations. Oh, uh, besides I kept hitting the ceiling? You're right, that was there before. Besides that. It was. Um, as you already marked, um, it's really tempting to put some wrist flappies in there, especially when you're doing the Molinese. So that's something to concentrate on. And you do so much less of it than you used to. Hey. Because the power of practice. Okay, that was cheesy. We should go on and do other things, huh? Yes. Otherwise, they're going to unsubscribe, aren't they? Sadness. Okay, have fun and go do the thing. We've got more videos and content coming, so if you liked what you saw and it was useful for you, please stab the like button, slash subscribe, and punch the little bell icon so that you're notified immediately when new content comes available. Thanks, and go do the thing.